Out of the box, Odin Inspector plays nicely with scriptable objects, as we've shown in previous videos. If you missed our earlier video where we created an Odin menu editor window, we would recommend watching that video first, as this one may skip over some of the details covered in the previous video. In this video, we want to create an Odin menu editor window to organize all of our scriptable object data. In the past, we've done this for a single scriptable object type, but now we want to pull in multiple types into the same editor window. This creates a more organized, nicer looking, and also easier to use workflow. To do this, we'll be creating two new classes. The first will be an attribute, and the second will be an editor window that will inherit from Odin menu editor window. Additionally, towards the end of the video, we'll build an optional third class that does not make significant use of Odin, but will create additional functionality and organization by adding buttons for each type of scriptable object at the top of the editor window. So to get started, let's first create our new attribute. This class will be empty, but needs to inherit from attribute. To access the attribute class, we'll also need to add in the system namespace. The attribute is effectively functioning as a tag or label, so additional functionality or fields are not needed within the attribute. Next, we'll create our editor window, and this is where Odin Inspector is going to make things much easier when compared to creating our editor window with just the built-in Unity functionality. To get started, we'll need to add several namespaces, including serenix.odinspector.editor, system, system.link, and Unity Editor. Our editor window class will need to inherit from Odin menu editor window. This class will draw the menu tree to the left of the window for us and allow for easy selection of the scriptable objects. Next, we need to get all the types that have been decorated with our manageable attribute. To do this, we'll create an array of types and populate that list with type cache dot get types with attribute. We'll then order the return collection by name and convert the collection to an array. To allow us to open the window, we'll create an open editor function that we'll call get window. Adding the menu item attribute to this function will add an entry to the tools menu in Unity to allow us to open the window. Our last step is to override the function build menu tree. Inside the function, we first need to create a new Odin menu tree. Then a for each loop will iterate through all the different types that will be displayed. Inside the loop, to add assets to the menu tree, we'll use add all assets at path. This takes in the menu path, which we can set to the name of the type. Next is the location of our assets. In our case, we can pass in the assets folder as we will also search subfolders. And you can of course point to a more specific folder location. Next, we'll pass in the type of scriptable object followed by a true parameter that will allow the searching of subfolders and an additional true parameter to flatten those subdirectories in the editor window. Returning the value of the menu tree completes the code for our data manager window. With that done, all we need to do is add our new attribute to any of the scriptable objects we want to import, and then open our newly created editor window. All the scriptable objects are organized by type and accessible in a single window. But we can still go further. If your project has a large number of scriptable objects, you might want even more organization. To help achieve that, we can add a row of buttons at the top of the window that will toggle which type of scriptable object is currently displayed in the menu tree. To do this, we need to create a new GUI utilities class that will draw the buttons for us. As a side note, this GUI utilities class makes only minor use of Odin and relies heavily on built-in Unity functionality. So we're gonna move somewhat quickly. We will, however, provide links to the relevant Unity documentation in the description below if you'd like to learn more. Our GUI utilities class will need two static functions. The first function will draw a button with a label and return a Boolean informing us if the button was pressed. This function will take in the rect where the button should be drawn, named to be displayed on the button, as well as whether the button is currently selected or not. Inside the function, we'll draw the button, returning true if the button was clicked. Then if the current UI event is repaint, we'll adjust the size of the button as needed and add the label. Our second function will draw the row of buttons by making use of our first function for each individual button. This function will take in a reference to the selected type of scriptable object, as well as a list of all types to display. We create a rect and then use a for loop to iterate through all the different types, creating a button for each type. In the process, we grab the name of the type as well as split the original rect into smaller recs that will contain individual buttons. The rect split function is a helper function packaged with Odin Inspector and requires the addition of the serenix.odinspector namespace, whereas the GUI helper class requires the addition of the serenix.utilities.editor namespace. To draw our buttons, we need to modify our previously created editor window class. We need to store a reference to the selected type. Storing this will allow the editor window to know what type it should currently display based on which button has been pressed. 
So we'll create a new variable called selected type. Next, we need to override the on GUI function. Wrapped in an if statement, we'll call our select button list function from our GUI utilities class. We'll then pass in a reference to the selected type as well as array of types that can be displayed. In return, we get a Boolean, true if one of the buttons was pressed, false if it wasn't. If the button was pressed, we need to force the menu tree to rebuild. We also need to call base.onGUI to ensure that all other aspects of the window are drawn correctly. Our last step is to remove the for each loop from the build menu tree function and modify the line with the add all assets at path function. Here, we need to change the type added to the tree to selected type so that we draw the type corresponding to the button that was pressed. And finally, we'll add one more Boolean parameter to flatten the subdirectories, which will have the effect of simplifying our menu tree now that we have buttons at the top. Back in Unity, we now have a functional row of buttons that select a given type of scriptable object, making for a clean and very easy to use scriptable object editor window. So we hope that was interesting and better yet useful for you and your project. Until next time, happy game designing.